Well, I seem to be the internal <laughs> in this part of the program. So I really want to talk some more about the texts. Uh, but as you've heard now in the web project, we have uh, observed dialogic reading of literary apps in groups of six children and one adult. And this is not the most common reading situation for digital media. But exploring it might open some doors that it would be of interest to enter, maybe both to educationalists and to producers. The normal situation for use of touchscreen is one-to-one, -one, one child handling the screen. And this makes sense since the screen um, normally responds only to one touch at a time. And the context is normally a home setting. This is from my home. Where the child might read and hear the app with a near and dear adult, with another child, or on her own. In this presentation, I draw on experiences from the web observations mainly, <clears throat> but I also um, contextualize that from previous research that I've done on, of reading of literary apps, mostly in a home setting. My visits to private homes, where I have observed children showing me what they appreciated most in the apps we read together, have shown me that there are many ways to read an app and that rereadings may even increase this variety. Uh, the children may listen attentively, especially in the beginning when the story is new to them. And then gradually through repeated readings they start exploring the interactive features. They often go into details about the wording, tasting the wording, trying to repeat the sound of it, uh, and then exploring <clears throat> more of what happens on the screen. So once they're well acquainted with the app, they may move on to more specific explorations. For instance, the soundtrack or of interactive features that allow them to add their own marks in the story. Sometimes these experiments take them away from the narrative itself in ways that caretakers even may find subversive. My main point in starting with this backdrop is to point out that there are many ways to read an app and that one of the qualities of an app is the possibility to read it over and over again in different ways. The apps in the web project were read in a specific context. First of all, it was an institutional setting, differing from the more common leisurely reading of the home setting. Second, it was organized in groups, um, with six children reading with one adult, and this made it necessary to find some way of dealing with the fact that not all the children could have access to the touch screen in the ways they were probably used to from home. Either they needed to take turns or the interactive options would not be used to the full. Thirdly, there was a specific educational goal to the reading, um, aiming at inspiring the group to take part in dialogue and to use language to explore the app and share the experience. So indirectly, we could say that there are goals that may be seen as educational as well as social behind the design of the reading sessions. The point of emphasizing this is not to create a sharp dichotomy between the private and the institutional. For the children themselves, hopefully, the division is not so sharp. They may experience the excitement of a good story in, in kindergarten as well as at home and they may learn many things from it in both settings, language, story structure, ways of enjoying literature, and of taking social considerations in the situation they are in. The limitations are more relevant to our perspectives and what we have been looking for in our analysis and in the web uh, project. 
and also in the tool that you will be represented for. From the perspective of producers, I believe the setting we have been working with could be an additional practice to consider and a potential expansion of markets. Now, um, starting with the text, the literary story is the genre we settled for in this project. And the reason for that is that we wanted stories that could engage the children. And we foresaw that fictional stories would represent the challenge we wanted to put to the children, challenges of speaking about worlds apart, where you need a rich vocabulary and a language that could be disconnected from the here and now to talk about something happening east of the sun and west of the moon, as uh, Norwegian fairy tales would put it. That is a world where anything could happen. Moreover, of course, literary fiction will also help the children learn that kind of language and ling linguistic practices. So here we are talking about entering good circles of listening, learning and talking. Our observations have confirmed this expectation. Stories count. Children like stories. And interesting stories generate rich and interesting dialogues. <clears throat> In our material of the four main apps, the prime example is a story about Moomin by Finnish Tove Jansson, which generated more dialogue than the other three apps in our front list. The utterances are mostly about the story, but even in utterances about the medium, this app generates the most activity, which of course has to do with all the interactive functions it entails. Um, and we also see that the two most interactive apps, the two on the left here, um, generate quite even uh, activity from adults and children. Of course, there's one adult and six children, so the adult is talking most. <laughs> we always have to remember. Uh, the two other apps that are less interactive, that run more or less on their own, <coughs> need less talk from the teachers, it seems. Now, the other apps, not uh, the Moomin is, stands out here, but the other apps carry good stories too. But what is it that makes Moomin particularly suited for generating dialogue? My interpretation would involve the kind of story it is. The story itself is rather simple, telling about Moomin Troll who is on his way home with milk for his mother. On his way he meets Mimble and goes with her searching for little me. And they pass through landscapes with figures that are scary, but all the, the time they can see a glimpse of the sun shining over the Moomin Mama's, Moomin Mama's world. And in the picture book, this is creatively done by cutouts, where you can all the time see through the book that there is sunshine at the end. Um, well, finally, they arrive ho home and the milk has gone sour, but Mumi Mama finds a way to solve that. She serves some lemonade. Um, and we have the English title here, which sums up what it's all about, the book about Mumi, Mimble and Little Me. And that was a subtitle of the Swedish original, which plays with the suspense and surprise highlighted by Jansson's form experiment posing the same question repeatedly for every turn of the leaf. Hva tror du at det hente da? The form of this story appears as a series of tableaus with changing moods from one screen to the next or from one double spread to the next in the picture book. The verbal text is in verse, building up an expe expectation towards the end of each spread where the question 
signals that it is time for a new spread, a new tableau. The narrative progress is not so strong, which leaves plenty of time to explore each spread and talk about the characters and the moods. These are underlined visually, since every spread has its dominating color from dark and gray through strong blue to warm yellow and red at the end when they finally arrive in Mumu and Mama's house. The app adds to the mood by designing different soundscapes from stormy weather to the happy sound of birds in the sunshine when they finally arrive. The suspense and the contrast are mainly perceived locally from one spread to the next, while the overarching structure is the classical one in children's literature, moving from home out in a dangerous world and then returning back to the safe haven in Moomin Mama's house. There may be other qualities in other stories. In the Jesper and Open, Jakob and Eikop apps, the fascination is connected to the clear and unambiguous character. Jesper, who is always saying yes, and Noper, who is always saying no. This constellation opens up to an endless series of situations where these character traits may cause trouble or get the characters out of trouble. Language is also central in this story, since you can pose questions in different ways to make yes and no mean what you would like it to mean. And finally, Jesper finds out that he can do that to Noper. He says, hi, Noper, you wouldn't say no to a drive, would you? No, Noper replies, which means yes. Language is also a central motif in the Luna app about Luna's encounter with a fish at night when she cannot sleep. The story is about how Luna tries to understand the strange sounds coming out of the fish's mouth as language. And when the fish finally pronounces her own name, Luna, they are in touch. But the, the consequence is that Luna understands that the fish wants to leave her to follow the moon and she eventually has to let him go. This story is also philosophical, like the Moomin app, but with far less options to explore, both in terms of details in words and images and in terms of interactivity. However, the sound is vital in this story, which makes the app differ from the picture book. In The Seat, Frue, the story has a much clearer dramaturgy, from problem to solution. Sandra is living alternatively with her mom and dad after they split up, and the problem is that she's always longing for the parent who is not present, and she doesn't know what to call home anymore. One day she finds a seed, and from the seed grows a horse, Mith, and he takes her, her and mom on a ride to dad's house and strangely, San Sandra's divided home is mended through the contact. The app is characterized with rather long stretches of verbal text for each spread, and our observations suggest that the story may work better for an older audience than the four and five year olds that we have studied. Uh, and that the verbal load is too heavy compared to the images and other modes represented for our audience. The rhythm of reading seems to be too slow and too demanding. And actually, it takes 20 minutes to read this text, whereas all the others are less than 10 minutes reading time for the verbal text. So summing up this um, reflection on the apps we've used, uh, we need not only a good story, but a story which has a form fit for the audience, for the medium and for the reading situation in front of the screen. That entail, entails a good balance between visual, verbal and auditory modes, a plot line and characters that not only engage the children, but that can also be modeled for explorative and performative reading. And timing seems to be essential to make the modes of the multimodal story work together. The tablet is a dynamic medium that creates a rhythm of its own through the digital reading process, as 
Annette Hagen is working on in her PhD project on literary apps. Then some more about the medium. As I mentioned from the start, the digital touch screen is in the outside, designed for one person who handles one screen. This is what shapes the reader's expectations to the medium. It invites touch, interaction and immediate response in ways quite different from book reading. When the tablet is moved into the kindergarten with its group structures, we also need to ask how it can make, be made to work in groups. The question of how the reading space is designed, as we have touched upon earlier today, suddenly becomes important. We have observed these two, mainly two ways of organizing the groups, showing Mimicking the situation with picture books, where the teacher is in control of the tablet, showing it to the children, and also controlling access to the screen. This requires the teacher to be well prepared, since she has chosen to give priority to facing the children and see their faces, and hence she can't see the screen at the same time. Um, Uh, in an educational setting, this seems to be the design that generates the most focused dialogues directed to the narrative, though it may come at the cost of the children's opportunity to explore the interac interactional features of the medium. The alternative is sharing, where children and teachers share access to the screen, and this gives children and adults the same view and an equal position towards the screen. But it may also require other measures, maybe stronger rules to control the children in that situation. In some ways, the medium in digital reading carries meaning in itself. Touching the screen in various ways, tapping, swiping and tracing is part of the reading experience. And the actions of the reader result in expansions of the text. In the best cases, these expansions enrich the text and makes the reader into a co-creator of the story. I have observed the delight in the eyes of a child reader who makes Jesper say yes at exactly the right moment in the narration. Um, and also the joy of adding sound that really corresponds with the narration. But of course, I've also seen children who get lost in interactivity, tapping the screen continuously to hear, yes, 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 no, 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 no. However, this rarely happens in the first or second reading. Uh, and it comes to an end when it's not fun anymore. So I wouldn't dread it too much if the situation is open to it. The point here is that any effect can be used or misused in various ways, and this is one example of where the children need guidance and support from the presence of an adult reader who can keep their interest focused on the story. The more principal question here is when, interacti when interactive features enhance the story and when they are disturbing or lead astray. That again depends on what kind of story it is, as I talked about previously. The movement story gives space for several exploratory interruptions, since the story is philosophical and exploratory in itself. The activities of searching for little me, making rocks roll, tracing movement trawl through the vacuum hose, and performing thunder and lightning are logically connected to the narrative of traveling through an uncertain world. Other activities may be more loosely connected to the plot, such as making apples fall and animals climb in trees, drawing an image of the filionque, or tapping the shells decorating Moomin Mama's garden to find the pearl. Still, they do add to the experience of setting and characters. In Roland Barthes' terminology, the first cases are connected to kernel functions of the narrative structures, the ones that make up the gist of the narrative, the plot line. The more loosely connected activities are connected to satellite functions. 
An understanding of what function is central to the story is vital for app producers who want the interactive features to enrich the narrative and for adults who are uh, supporting and guiding the readers. The opposite would be features that distract the attention away from the narrative, such as an animation that is not about anything central in the image at all. Uh, I've seen some apps based on classical adventure stories in Disney wrapping, where the princess never comes to the stage where she meets the prince. She's stuck in the wardrobe, eagerly choosing garments and working on her makeup and, and hairstyle, and the prince gets pretty uninteresting. Whatever the fascination in these games, it is not about literary narratives and it's not about plot lines and I don't think it generates very good dialogues. For the social use of apps in the kindergarten, a basic requirement to the app is flexibility. Most apps today give you the choice whether you want to read yourself or to be read to. So far, so good, but if turning off the narrator's voice also means removing the whole soundscape, that comes with a great loss for the multimodal storytelling. Music and sound effects add to the mood of the story and may also serve to underline the rhythm. These are major affordances in the digital medium compared to the book. Another affordance is connected to movement. The movement can be within each spread in the form of animations or it may come through the way the app shifts from one image to the next leafing between spreads similar to book reading or cutting and panning between scenes as we see in films. Meaningful movements guide the reader's attention, but if the app automatically shifts from, from one image to the next, that may interrupt interesting dialogue and limit the opportunity to go treasure hunting for details. Breaks are vital to dialogic reading and they should be the choice of the reader. The reading situation with small children gathered around one adult with a text is familiar in a kindergarten setting. And whether the reading happens in the kindergarten or at home, the special contact that occurs between adult and child over a good story is to be treasured. No app can or should take over that connection. Even though that is what apps are designed to do. They read a book to you. Um, in previous observations of children using picture book apps in a home setting, I have seen how the parents often feel left over when they are not needed to read out the words of the book. And some apps seem to use interactivity to fill the gaps in the story, as if to make sure the child can understand the story even without adult support. But I have also observed that the, ch the children still appreciate the adult contact. They may need some technical support or a gentle reminder to get on with the story if they get stuck with one of the interactive features. But above all, they appreciate someone to sh share the experience with. So my advice to those who produce apps or select them for use in kindergarten is to look for apps that may appeal to both adults and children as good stories do, and good humor does, and nice pictures do. And leave some gaps for curious investigation. Gaps that invite sharing the engagement and the creativity. In spite of the individualization that is happening with all our mobile screens, we know that the screen experience can also be a social event. Children may share the experience, often in pairs, and we often see how the more competent peer guides his or her co-reader. A child may be competent, for example, in that he or she has read the story before, as Trine Solsta has shown in her research of reading picture books in kindergarten, and this gives a special position of mastering and sharing um, because of being familiar with the story creates a different position. 
And maybe we should sometimes give the more competent peer who has read the app before the chance to have that role that the teacher usually takes. Because organizing the children in groups of six led by an adult uh, automatically places the adult in control, in the center, in the leading position. In our obser observations, we see how the teachers prepare carefully, getting acquainted with the story, trying out the interactive functions and deciding where to stop for further explorations and decided deciding how to distribute the access to the screen. This may be necessary to ensure everyone in the group is included, uh, though I would say adult control is not an aim in itself. Um, to the producers, if there are any representatives of the producers in here, there is one particular concern I feel the need to address. Recently, we have seen a discouraging downturn from the optimistic introduction of the first picture book apps in the Norwegian markets around 2012. Uh, problems of global competition and distribution are of concern, concern since we do need good apps in the Norwegian language for Norwegian children. Ironically, I'm saying this in English. <laughs> Finding the Norwegian apps in the wilderness on App Store is practically impossible. Our hope is that we can, that Web can contribute to making the good apps known and uh, providing a platform for sharing experience with good apps. And I believe that people such as kindergarten teachers and also librarians, which is another group of pr practitioners I've been discussing this with, could actually serve as ambassadors, as door openers to uh, a domestic app market that would work. And also serve as ambassador to developing app reading practices in the group settings. By the time Web has come to an end, many of the apps do not work anymore. This is a screenshot from last week. Um, so some of us keep our old iPads just because that's the only way to make the old apps work. Uh, so, when I try to open an app, I, I'm told that to contact the producers because the updates are not available. Um, we know that digital applications have to be constantly changing and have to follow the updates in the platform. But imagine the, the feeling of the group of children who are all cuddled up to enjoy a reading session and suddenly the favorite app doesn't work. It's not very encouraging. Finally, as both Christine and Margaret, I would question the dichotomy, either app or book. I think we could benefit from thinking through how we consider the app in relation to the book reading. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily be uh, a situation of competition. Um, I find much inspiration in John, John Bryant's concept of fluid text, where he considers all versions of a story to be versions of the same work that can fruitfully work together uh, to go more in-depth to read in different ways. Uh, in the digital age, books and apps should be able to live peacefully side by side in a multifaceted literary circulation. Thank you. <laughs>